Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Hello. Um, we've got chat going on. We've got Q&A going on. So if you would just drop me a little note in the chat to make sure that you can see us and hear us okay, um, then we get started. We've just got a couple more people who are going to be joining us. Um, but first of all, I wanted to say welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited that we get to do another one of these virtual programs. They're really fun um, for us to do. They're really fun to plan. And um, we've been really concentrating on what you guys have been uh, sending to us, all the information, um, emails that I get afterwards. You'll receive a survey at the end of it. So if um, you know any information that you could give us um, about things that you liked, things that you'd like to see going forward. We're really trying to keep these virtual programs timely, uh, things that you guys need from us right now. Um, so please, you know, any input is awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lottie McKinnon. I am Teleflora's Program Director of Industry Relations and Education. And it is my uh, job and my honor to be able to bring these programs to you. Um, just a quick note, this one will be available on YouTube for any of you um, who weren't able to catch the whole thing or would like to share it with your colleagues. Um, we will be doing Q&A uh, throughout. So you see that little Q&A button on the, the bottom strip of the uh, Zoom thing here. So please feel free to input your questions. David will be answering them throughout. So. Um, any, you know, any questions he's happy to answer. He's got a ton of really, really great stuff planned for you. Um, before we get going and not to take too much time away from David, um, I just wanted to go, do a quick little shout out for the things that we've got coming up. Um, we are going to have a couple of weeks break here. And then at the beginning of October, we're going to be doing a live virtual holiday selling boot camp, And it's going to be um, two design programs and then we're gonna do a, a phone selling uh, little portion and then we're gonna do a design contest. So um, really, really fun stuff for um, everything from Halloween all the way through to Christmas. So um, lots of you know, glitter and all the fun stuff. So um, be on the lookout for information about that. We've also got a couple of um, virtual design classes coming up and those are being presented by Jody McLeod and Hitomi Gilliam. Um, they're, they're done in a very cool kind of uh, format, a classroom format, but from the comfort of your own shop or your own home, um, we send you all the flowers that you need and all the hard goods that you need to do. It's three or four projects per, uh, per class. So a couple of fun things going on. Um, I will stop talking now and I'm going to hand it over to two amazing ladies. These two ladies work so hard to bring education to their local areas and um, they have become great friends and um, super excited about education and we appreciate you so much. We appreciate all your time and all your hard work. And I know that you've both been talking to David about things that are going on in your area to make this really relevant for what you guys have going on. So without further ado, I'd like to turn over to Arlene Aitken, who is the unit president for the Colonial Virginia unit. Hi, Arlene. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And a shout out to all the, um, all the people who are in our unit watching. Um, I'm Arlene with Morrison's Flowers in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I've owned Morrison's for about 18 years. I am ashamed to say that I bought the business with no um, floral design knowledge. And thanks to Teleflora and the educational opportunities they've offered. I do know how to arrange <laughs> designs awesome. now. And uh, it's given me a lot of insight into running a business and floral design. So it's just so important for us to take every advantage of the educational opportunities afforded us. And I look forward to seeing what David's going to show us tonight. Thanks, Arlene. Leanna, hi. Hello. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Leanna Mayberry and uh, I have owned and operated my shop in Greenville, Pennsylvania for 22 years now. And I've been involved with Teleflora's Western Pennsylvania unit for 20 years. So excited to be a part of everything and, and bring some great education to y'all tonight. Um, 
I don't know if some of you are like I am that uh, lately just the everyday designs and everyday just getting through life has been a little bit difficult keeping it all fresh and exciting. So that is one of the reasons I am super excited to present to you our designer for this evening, David Powers. Um, David has been in the floral industry for 37 years. Um, he has managed and owned a retail florist. He has designed uh, for Fiesta parade floats, for the Oscars, for uh, President Obama. And in his 25 years as part of AIFD, has only fueled his passion for teaching designers to not work harder, but to work smarter. So I am super excited to present to you, David Powers. Yay! Hey, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Lottie, thank you, Teleflor, and thank you everybody for being here. I am super excited to kind of give you some new tips and have fun with doing small changes and making big impacts. And that's the title of the program tonight. Um, I don't think I need to say anything else about myself because Leanna took care of all of that. So um, if you do have questions, Lottie will be giving questions um, to me. So please don't hesitate to, to ask any questions that you have throughout the, the program. Um, I'm gonna try and do everything quickly because I have a lot that I would really like to show you. And I only did a few things in advance because I want you to, sh to see how to put them together. So um, I'm gonna start with a, um, a, a wooden cube that was very, very tattered. Um, and I took the birch cube and then added birch discs with just with hot glue to give it a little bit of pizzazz, okay? Kind of fun. And then we use sponge mushrooms, which are great on the top, but they have an amazing textural back. So don't be afraid to use them in the opposite direction. Okay, so this just has a half a block of foam and I'm going to reach under the table and grab these flowers and I'll put this, start putting this together. So we have a lot of beautiful local products. Um, this is some beautiful green uh, coxcomb celosia and we're going to do some, some basing and uh, texturing here. All right, so I've kind of made like, and I'm going to tilt so that you can see it kind of made like a, a little sidewalk, a little pathway through there. Okay. And then I'm going to add my height. And I want you to know that throughout this program, I only used one bunch of each one of these materials that I have. So this is um, Montbrigia or Procosmia. And everything has been pre-cleaned so that we can just kind of whip right through these designs, okay? So it's gonna do a very nice sharp angle. Okay, so- Where was that yes. container from? Somebody's asking. That container is actually from uh, Giftwares. Um, that is also, um, I believe, a similar version of this is uh, available through Accent Decor. Okay. okay. Thank you. Try and do this so that it's going to be, I don't have to move the design too much so that you can see what's happening. Okay. So I'm doing a little bit of framework with the Crocosmia so that this framework will bring your eyes down into the focal area of the design. And I know that you all have those containers in your warehouses or in your flower shop that are a little bit weathered or tattered and you should not be afraid to use different techniques on those containers. Use um, Design Master paints and, and make them beautiful with that, or, or as we did here with the birch discs, okay? So here we have some beautiful scabiosa pods, okay? 
And we're going to do those as a small cluster as well. And I'm going to cut several at a time. Actually insert them all at one time. For those of you that know me or have seen me do any design work or have seen me do any design programs anywhere, I had a shop and I like to make money. So I'm using things that are, are local. Yes, I work for a wholesale house. I've been working in wholesale for uh, 11 years. But during this time of year, why not support your local farmers and support your United States grown products? The Crocosmia is from um, California. The Coxcomb and Scaviosa pods are from right here from Pennsylvania. Um, this Hypericum is actually from Southern Maryland, and it's amazing. It's the large Coco Grande, and it is absolutely incredible. Okay. So we're going to add that in for some beautiful coloring. David. Yes, ma'am. Rachel had um, a great question. The mushroom Certainly. touching the wet sponge, won't it ruin it? No, actually, it just changes the color. And I'm going to pull this one back out because it has changed the color. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Okay. Versus, versus the dry. Beautiful. So if you're doing this for, you know, for a customer, you know, they're not going to keep it. They're not going to know what to do with it, right? But if you're using this, I think these are great for event work for, you know, for this time of year for your fall parties. If it does get wet and you want to reuse it, you just take it out of there um, and let it dry in the sun. Um, you can also bake it in your oven Make sure that it has um, a wooden stick. If it has a metal stick, um, you'll need to wrap that with aluminum foil so that it doesn't get too extremely hot. But um, you can put that in the oven at about 150 degrees for about an hour, and it will go right back into its original color, and it will last quite a while. Great question. Great tip. Thank you. Of course. All right. And I love chrysanthemums. And so we have two stems of chrysanthemums, four uh, of the Celosia coxcomb, and we have seven stems of Scabiosa pod, four mushrooms in a container, and eight stems of, or, excuse me, seven stems of the Mabrigia or Crocosmia. So I know that those of you that watched the program last week with with Miss Vonda, you could be able to add that up really quick from what I understand. I didn't actually get to see her program, but I know what a genius she is with pricing. So I hope that was um, well worth the watch and I'm gonna watch it probably on Thursday. We'll not be watching it tomorrow. Okay. So here is just a great little design that has minimal product, but a nice large impact, okay? Beautiful, thank you. Of course, let's move this over here. All right, so here we have a beautiful Teleflora container. And I know that you all know this container because it's one of my favorites. It's the square bamboo. And this one is basically finished. Um, but just wanted to see, show you that we did use the mushrooms on the opposite side. I'm going to pull that closer to the camera so that you can see the textures, okay? It's quite amazing. And here, just so you understand my thought and process with this design is, um, I don't know, I kind of thought about it as the arc, you know, and everything is in twos. Two Crocosmia, two Saladago, two uh, Spider Mums, two Sunflowers, two Yarrow, two Carnations, two Leaves, and two Sponge Mushrooms. How fun is that? Who says we can't do things in twos? But we are going to just add these beautiful pincushion tortillas. Okay, we'll place one down here at the base. Okay. 
make sure that we are balanced with the weight of the foliage and the color and the weight of the tortillas and your sunflowers, just so that you have a nice visual weight, okay? And then we have a great little trick with making some foliage accents, okay? So I'll show you the little foliage accents. Okay, can you see those? Is that yeah, just hold them one? still if you would for a second, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Okay. This is Aspidistra, okay? And for the longest time in my childhood, we used to make ribbon roses. So this is basically the same thing, okay? Except we're gonna do it with a piece of Aspidistra. And another little trick for this Aspidistra um, tip is to take your Aspidistra and do five stems at a time, wrap them up in a paper towel, put them in the microwave for 15 seconds. It makes them extremely pliable so that it doesn't crack when you, when you start folding it. It really eliminates the spine from cracking and, getting, and not being very presentable, okay? So I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do this to make it look really good. So we're gonna do the leaf and we're gonna like roll it in our hand and we're gonna twist it to a 90 degree angle, okay? Got that? Okay. And then we're gonna take that leaf and we're gonna twist it again at a 90 degree angle toward myself. Okay. And you're gonna twist it again at a 90 degree angle amongst itself. I'm not, now I'm losing it. So it's this way, this way. Okay. And you're gonna continue twisting at 90 degree angles. So the hard thing for me to do here is to hold it this way and this way because the, the stem needs to be perpendicular to the floor. It needs to be straight up and down to the floor. So you're gonna continue doing a 90 degree turns. Okay. And the leaf folds over and you get both the dull and the shiny side of the Aspidistra, which is really cool. And it's even more cool with variegated Aspidistra. And once you get this to about an inch of leaf left, okay, see that? You're gonna take that piece of the leaf and you're gonna wrap it around the stem. Okay, got that, it's wrapped around the stem. Then I'm gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna take a small piece of wire. In this case, I'm just using a, a tiny piece of spool wire. And I'm gonna place the wire next to the leaf with the wire coming down. I don't know if you can see that really well. And then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna wrap the wire around the leaf that is holding next to the stem, okay? So you end up with a little ribbon rose out of an Aspidistra. So those, now I will tell you, after you have this in the microwave, you can actually take this, make these ribbon roses, cut the stem, put it in water, put it in your cooler. It will get turgid again, so the leaf will actually fill with water again. And these will last in your cooler for two to three weeks, easily, okay? So on those down times, you can actually make these so that you can present them to your customers as little add-on sales, okay? So in keeping with the two, we'll just add those two little rosettes in there for your accent. Okay. Those are fabulous, David. Thanks. You know that we're all looking um, outside our windows now or in our coolers just to go and see if we can, we can sit here and play <laughs> while you talk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. This is another um, Teleflora container that I absolutely love. Okay. Um, it's, and I did not, purposely did not put it, um, put this uh, little, uh, what are they called? Little spring action things that go with them. Because I wanted everybody to see that it is, it, when it comes to you, you have the two separate pieces and all you have to do is slide them together, put your container on. And it does have little springs that, that actually hold this to the container if you're doing delivery, okay? 
This is one bunch of yellow Ulstermeria into a topiary. Seven at the top, three in the base. And then we have the um, Stuartiana eucalyptus. This is the autumn eucalyptus. This is absolutely incredible. And I'm gonna put that closer to the screen so you can see the color of it. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. So David, this, um, yeah, yes ma'am. Can you share the mechanics of um, how you make it stay together um, at, the, at the very top of the topiary, please? Sure, and actually it's kind of fun because this, uh, again, I do this so that I can show you that I just used a little piece of wire, okay? Now, when I send this out to a client, of course, I'm gonna take either raffia or a little piece of ribbon and tie around that to hide that wire but I just use a little piece of wire. You could use bind wire, you could use raffia, you could use ribbon if you wanted to, but it's um, many, many different ways that you can do the tying on of that, um, securing those pieces together at the top. Another trick for this is when you insert this into your, this isn't a piece of foam, it's a one third of a block of foam inside here. I actually took little pieces of foam and put beside it, and then I also carved out a very small hole about the size of a nickel inside there. Now, someone just told me this the other day. I didn't bring it with me, but you can use like an apple core, okay? So you can just core that, just pull that little core out, okay? And so you can then put your stems of Alstroemeria down into the foam without bludgeoning the foam and, and possibly making it burst, okay? Down here is just the pieces, the bottom pieces of the eucalyptus, and they are just cleaned on each end, okay? So that you can put that in there as an accent, okay? At the end of the day, I don't wanna see anything like that in my trash can. As, as an owner, former owner of a flower shop, that is my vacation fund, okay? So I hope you like that. This over here on the way. Right. And then we have accent decor containers. I love the hobnail look. Okay. And this is not all going to fit on here, but I'm going to put the small one here and the medium size here. And then we'll take the large one and just place it down beside the table here. Okay. These are just incredible containers, amazing for daily work. I could see any of these being used as a daily centerpiece or a daily order that, to go out for anyone. Um, I truly love the monoflora look, something, you know, in, in monoflora being using one type of flower to create the design, the allium drumstick, gumfrina, and the battleline carnations. Um, I love this variety of carnations. Let me grab one here. It is one of the new varieties and it, the color is just incredible. Okay. So I feel like those. Okay. So um, again, Accent Decor has some incredible containers. So the container might be a little bit more pricey, but think of it as the keepsake container that a lot of your customers are probably going to want now. And then they can come back and bring and have that container refilled or they can just come in and buy one bunch of flowers from you to put into their container. So um, it's just pittosporum and a little bit of the brain celosia at the bottom, the coxcomb, um, and just very simple, all in water, no foam needed. Okay, any questions on these? David, um, actually just a quick question from your previous one, because that topiary. Um, of course. Gorgeous. Um, what is the grade of Alstroemeria that you're using? Is it select? It's select. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for the um, question, Mary. Absolutely. Um, I, I would prefer for a retail flower shop to use select grade Alstroemeria than fancy. Because fancy is what you can buy and I'm not knocking them by any means, but those are what you can buy in, in your supermarkets. Um, that's what you see at vendors who are out on the street selling their little bouquets. So if I want something that's going to make me look a little bit different, I want to sell a better grade of Ulster area. There is a super select as well. So I might want to use those for events and parties and 
possibly get them back and then sell them again in my retail shop. I'm not above it. Nice. <laughs> David, um, yes, ma'am. A couple of people are asking, can you um, repeat the name of the carnation again? Babylon. Babylon, everyone. Babylon, yes. And it's then- a great, um, It's a great novelty variety. Yes. Rachel uh, is asking the, the big difference between the select, select and fancy um, you, you just discussed. Generally price okay. Okay. and size, the size of the flower, the size of a, um, let me just pull this back over, the size of a select Alstroemeria, so you can see the size of the flower. Let me put my hand there so you can see, okay? Beautiful. This is one stem, okay? Fancy is going to be about half that size. Okay? okay. And then Super Select is actually going to be about um, a half a size larger than the Select. Okay? So another thing that we have a lot of, and everybody uses them all the time, are cubes. Okay? So let me just undress this cube. Okay? So this is just one bunch of orange babe spray roses in a simple, inexpensive cube, glass cube, okay? And then these are absolutely incredible, and I will plug them. Fitz Designs carries these, okay? And all you do is, let me take the roses out. It is stretchy, and you just put that right over top of your vase. And you've just made that vase look like a million bucks. Okay. So one bunch of, of the, the uh, beautiful babe spray roses. Okay. And since I've hidden the inside mechanic, this is just nothing but a rubber band around the bottom. Okay. Really didn't do anything except clean the flowers. But wanted to introduce you to a beautiful new mini Gerber daisy called Petticoat. Isn't she lovely? And with this already in, you have your mechanic already there for your Gerber daisies to create that larger design look. So you're making a small change to that vase. You know what, that's too tall. Let's cut that down just a little bit. The stems of your roses are creating the mechanic for you to put your flowers in. It's too tall. Let's cut it down. Okay. All right. So now that we have the Gerber Jaysies in. We have your first design of just the roses, which you could sell every day, add on for your Gerber daisies. And then a lot of people have been asking, how do you work with succulents? So I have a couple of succulents here. And hopefully you all know what bamboo skewers are. Not Bamboo skewer, okay, it has that really sharp pointy end. Okay, put that against my shirt, you can see that. All I do is I use, if I'm doing a lot of them, I take a Dremel, one of the little hand drills, and I'll drill a tiny little hole in it, and I'll put my bamboo skewer in there with floral adhesive glue, the tube adhesive glue, okay? And then I have this, on, and this is on a bamboo skewer, so it's gonna, it goes into the design, it's going to, the skewer is going to wick water which will go all the way up through to the stem of the Echeveria, okay? So that will give you a great little add-on sale for those. And I'm gonna use two different varieties. Okay. And I have one larger one here that we're gonna put right down in the center here. And then if I can tilt this up just enough for you to see that beautiful texture down inside that design. Let me move this guy right here, okay? 
See that texture down inside there? Just beautiful. People then look down into inside the design and, and just admire those beautiful little accents. Okay. Any questions on the Echeveria? No. no, there has to be at least one. We have a ton of other questions though. So if you were at a sure. point, I would I'd like to uh, throw some your way. Sure. Okay. Um, the first question, um, it actually goes back a little bit. I apologize, Gabe. Um, the tall arrangement, how did you get the diagonal design with the tall flowers without foam? You said it was water only. This, so yes. if I yeah. pull this one back here. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that we did is, I'm going to, don't normally do this, but I'm going to, is inside here is pittosporum. I put the foliage in first. And then I put in the coxcomb. And then we put in the drumstick allium. And they're actually fairly tight. Um, if I were going to deliver this, I would probably um, put a few more pieces of pittosporum down inside there. So once you have, just break the piece off here. Once you have that pittosporum inside there, or the uh, allium inside there, you get to, you know clean off another piece of pittosporum just to totally secure that, and you just shove it down inside there with your finger to make sure that it's all stable and in place. Okay. Awesome. Does Thank that you. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Great. All right. Awesome. Um, there's a question here from uh, your fellow, one of your fellow um, education specialists. Sure. Um, is uh -huh. asking, are you seeing a trend toward using less foam and more water-based stylings? Um, yes and no. Um, I will say yes, because in my particular area, um, I'm pretty honored to have one of my own personal customers as Holly Chapel, um, who has all of come up with the pillows and the eggs and has used those quite a bit. And um, since she's my customer and I sell to her, I know what she likes as far as flowers, but I also have learned from her about the techniques of using those pillows and the styles and how that, how that works um, without using foam. Do I think flowers like water more than foam? Probably. But with the introduction of um, Oasis floral foam has, is called Max Life, has floral preservative in it now. So I have tested both directions. In water, I can get hydrangeas to last me um, sometimes up to two weeks in, in wow. just plain water. Um, and I'm being very um, cautious in saying that, you know what, I didn't even change the water. But I've also tested it in foam, the Max Life Instant um, Oasis foam, and I've had them last for two weeks in the foam, and I've added water to it every day. I have not cleaned out the container, but I have added water to the container every day to make sure that the water level is up as high as it should be in the foam. Um, and so, I guess it would be considered six of one and yeah. six of another. <laughs> so we have a good full dozen. Um, but I know a lot of people that still like using foam because they can actually make things and do things a little bit differently. Um, they, have a, they feel like they have a little bit more control. Okay. I wanna show this, this is super fun. This is the Teleflora rectangular bamboo cube, or oh, bamboo um, container. One more yes, question, I'm so sorry. Um, Please. Gina, Gina Waters is asking about um, how long will succulents last like that? Since we're talking about longevity. <laughs> <laughs> Using those bamboo skewers, I have actually gotten so tired of looking at them that I've actually thrown them out. Um, six months, getting, getting good quality succulents um, is key. If you're going to cut them off of the plant itself, you need to know how to condition them in order to make them last longer. It's not just cutting it and putting it into the design. Just like your flowers, you can't just cut it and put it right into an arrangement and expect it to live a while. You need to know what nutrients they need in order to make it last. And I 
teach a lot of classes at a local community college and I tell all of them, if you don't know what you're selling or how to take care of what you're selling, you shouldn't be selling it. Sounds kind of harsh, but if you think about it, if you go to a restaurant and you order a medium rare steak and it comes out medium well, you're not going to be happy. So it's knowing how to take care of your product, knowing how to cook your product to make your customer happy in the end. So um, longevity um, for most of the product that I'm using today, easily seven to 10 days, because I know how to take care of the product initially and process it properly to make it last a long time. Okay, great question. Thanks. So here is the container. And what I've done is taken, um, and it's full of water, but I've taken lotus pods and I've used a bamboo skewer and to connect them. And then I've used a tiny bit of hot glue from a pan, not from a glue gun, because the hot pan melt glue will actually adhere to the container. And if it goes into the cooler, it's not going to pop off. You'll still be able to leave it in and put it into your cooler. So a great little accent prior. So you could do this in advance as well for your, for your fall season that's coming up. Um, you could have those containers ready, then just add your water as you need. So what we have here is just one stem of beautiful Dutch hydrangea that will go into the center. And then you have that grid already with your skewer. Okay, so you've already made a, a, a little grid with that for your mechanic. Another question is, is, has been about kale. So I'm going to do this first. I'm going to fold this back up. Because when I got this kale this morning out of the cooler, it was tiny. It was about that big. Okay. So certainly not going to do what I want it to. So you reflex the foliage and look at the size difference. Okay. So if you don't know how to reflex, just flex and then re. Reflex, you're just gonna peel the leaf back. You use your thumb at the back of the vein and, you, and, it, and it just pops back. And you can do that with roses, you can do that with kale, you can do that with quite a few things actually. Okay, so we'll just pop those out a little bit. Pop that off. We're only going to use two pieces here. Inside there. Because we don't want to hide all of those beautiful lotus pods. Okay. And then I am a huge fan of wildflowers. So we have some beautiful Matricaria daisy. We're going to leave this really tall, maybe not quite that tall. And we'll just use our hydrangea and our skewer grid to put in the matricaria. Going through the kale foliage itself is also going to help me hold that together. I hope a lot of you are wildflower fans and are using them now because they're so beautiful. Using them now before this winter hits. We all know it's coming. Especially me now that all of our holiday pricing guides are out. And people are starting to think about holiday Christmas greens. Wow. It's kind of frightening. But exciting at the same time. Use just a couple of these beautiful Babylon carnations. I'm going to cut them off short and use them at the base as well. To give it that depth and interest of the color, bringing up the color of the container and the lotus pod into that carnation is just really, really nice.
And then just for a little bit of fun, we'll add some foxtail ceteria. It's a type of millet. Okay. And we're going to just shoot that off to one side just to add some fun. Okay. So there you have a great little design piece. Good for every day. Certainly long lasting. Could certainly use something other than kale. You could use a couple of roses down in there if you'd like. Um, and changing out the machicaria to a wax flower or maybe even just using a beautiful Queen Anne's lace would be beautiful as well. Okay. David. Um, yes, ma'am. Questions on that one. Um, yes. One from uh, the lovely Cindy Reynolds. Um, how are the lotus pods attached to the skewers? Is that uh, pan glue or how are you attaching it's, them? They're at the, actually the um, lotus pods have been hot gl pan mount glued to each side. So there's one on each side. So there's a skewer with two lotus pods. I have them here. So we just take, and you can see the well of the lotus pod. So you want to make sure that it's lower than that. Okay. So I just stick that through and then I would measure the container. So let me just pull a container here. Okay. So I would measure the container and then I would pierce the other lotus. Okay. Then I would measure the sides. Okay. So I would put a little bit of glue in here and in here. So when that glue is still warm, I would then attach that to the container. Okay? okay. So this one would probably take six total lotus pods and three skewers. Okay. okay. And you could do that to almost any container. Okay. Perfect. Um, your one, another one of your uh, fellow education specialists, Tim Farrell, he mentioned Certainly. that uh, many florists are using the Babylon carnations as a budget value substitute for peonies in a more affordable design. Which Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. So take those beautiful carnations and cluster them together to give you that beautiful peony look. Yeah. Isn't that spectacular? Beautiful. And there's a lot of, you can use a lot of different things to, to get that look. The Babylon is one, but there's also other varieties that would give you the other colors. Um, Minerva is one that would give you a great burgundy um, look for a peony. So yeah, great. Thank you so much, Tim. David, right. we've got so many questions um, <laughs> about succulents. So yes. please share with everybody um, about conditioning succulents, please, before they go into Okay. The so if you're, if you're going to use succulents that you're getting pre-cut, um, generally those are coming from Holland. So those have already been preconditioned. So those you don't have to do anything to, except when you get them, make sure that there is no rotting foliage at the base. And the best thing to do is use a layer of stones with water inside the stones and then let the echeverias just sit on top of that, okay? If you're cutting them off of a plant, um, you need to cut them off of the plant and you have to use a product that actually is a rooting product. It's called Root Tone. You actually need to put that on the base where you've cut the echeveria. So let me just take this one. So if I would take this and I would cut it off of the plant, this end that is now has this scab on it, this um, is from Holland, so it's um, already done that. Um, you put the root tone on this and you let it sit, okay? Let it sit for at least 48 hours before putting it on the stones with the moisture under it. You want it, that root tone will actually cover over and scab like this does, okay? The scabbing actually is great because it seals all the moisture inside it, but because of the lovely word transpiration, which is the process of intaking water, um, the foliage actually intakes water as much as this little um, scabbed over stem will. So just sitting that in that stone base will actually, it will actually keep it alive. I actually had one sitting in stones in my home for three years and it actually bloomed. 
So it's kind of cool. Okay, does that Thank answer the you. question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Awesome. David, awesome. I know you've got a ton of information for us and some more designs and everything, but um, I would love if you could share, I know um, you know the wholesale uh, market is, is your specialty area. Um, would you mind uh, sharing some information you have for us? Because I know a lot of florists are really concerned about availability. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so as you all know, this pandemic crisis, COVIDina that we're in is making us all crazy. In the beginning part of that crisis, we all had to go back into our homes and sit there and wait. So we all had to do this quarantine. The same thing happened at the farm levels. So there are many, many farms around the world that for two three and up to four months were not growing flowers. They did not have enough staff to go out and, and cut their fields and clean their fields and cut product for us to have. So if you're feeling a little bit tense right now because you can't get delphinium and larkspur, <laughs> that's the reason because they've had to bring people back slowly as we all have and they're regenerating their farms and their fields and their greenhouses to meet the demand. Um, uh, you know, Arlene and I were talking and our Augusts were tremendous. Um, even in wholesale, my August was just crazy out of this world, but there were items that we couldn't get as readily because of the things that happened in the past. So, we're looking at things coming along and things are getting better. Um, I know that most of our rose growers are back to their normal pricing, which is fantastic. Um, and actually some, they're actually bringing on almost too many roses at one time. So prices for roses in our area have come down quite a bit. Um, but still things like um, Larkspur and Delphinium and even stock, there, there were a couple of farms in California that did close. Um, regretfully because they were amazing but their fields were not producing the money to warrant staying in business especially with the pandemic so they chose to close um, so now stock is a lot of stock and things like delphinium and larkspurs are coming from other parts of the world they're coming from Holland they're coming from Ecuador they're coming from Colombia they're coming from um, Kenya of all places so um, we just have to kind of go with the flow and make sure that we re-educate ourselves, re-educate our customers. And um, if you have questions about product availability for a wedding that you have in November, ask your wholesaler those questions now, because um, you know there might be an issue with getting certain um, quantities of something for for a wedding. You know, our area we're allowed to have 125 people maximum for any group gatherings. Um, with social distancing, with masks. So it's a lot different than the 300, 400, 500. And in Washington, D.C., the 1,000 to 1,500 people events, they're just not going to happen for quite a while. So just be aware that um, we need to re-educate ourselves and our customers that we might have to make substitutions. We'll keep your color palette and sell your artistry now sell your color harmonies that you know and, and have come to love. Instead of just using Pinterest and um, Instagram and all of the other great social medias that the brides bring to you or a party planner might bring to you, um, say, okay, great. These are beautiful things that you want, but we substitute that with something in the same color palette, same line texture. Um, the same um, focal area flower. We, we just might have to use something that's more readily available. And I think that they're gonna understand that if you use the right vocabulary, uh, make sure that it's appealing to them. You're not gonna wanna say, oh, that's not available, I'm sorry, you'll have to use something else. That's just not gonna cut it. Make sure that you have options for them. So we have sunflowers. 
Well, the sunflowers are not doing quite as well this time of year, so we might want to suggest going to a Gerber daisy. And we could get Gerber daisies in three different sizes, as well as we could get smaller chrysanthemums called Viking mums to give you four different looks and four different sizes of that same flower instead of that one large sunflower and make a group of them. So knowing what you have available in advance is going to help out a lot. Yeah, I think, like you said, David, it's so important um, educating your customers. I think that's kind of really Absolutely. the key there. And certainly, um, you know, bringing in your, your local wholesaler um, to give you the, the facts is, is super important too. So thank Absolutely. you for sharing and that information. They, your wholesaler should, should be able to share that information with you freely. Um, I think that in our society now, we need to be so transparent and be so honest because there's so much other negativity going on that we want to be the positive influence and flowers do that for us. You know, it, it's proven facts that flowers boost your endorphins to make you happy and make you smile. And even in the saddest of occasions, they can put a smile on your face. So, you know, just re-educating ourselves and making sure that your wholesaler is transparent with you and, and lets you know well in advance that something happens. On that same note, I will say that there are circumstances beyond control. It, for instance, flights. In, international flights are minimal. So things that take precedent to flowers on the same flights as passengers is their luggage. So if there's too much luggage, flowers sometimes will get bumped. The USDA and the um, coming into the, to the United States, our flowers go through a huge scrutinous process now. Um, we had um, here at Potomac, we had 630 boxes of flowers that did not get through customs because of one box that they found a caterpillar in. So, wow. If you can imagine 630 boxes of flowers that your client is expecting to have and you're not going to have it and you have to scrounge and, and make magic happen, which 90% of the time we do, um, we have actually chartered flights to get product here so, um, from Ecuador. So it's, you sometimes you just have to do what you have to do in order to make sure that your customers are happy. But in that sense, that's where I'm saying that knowing that you might need to do an exchange or a substitution and hopefully your wholesaler has the knowledge of knowing what types of flowers and what kinds of colors go together. So um, if not, now's the time that you can educate them a little bit. So Absolutely. keep that in mind. Thank you, David. Yeah. My pleasure. My pleasure. Tell us some more pretty things. Yeah, let's. So um, this is another container from Accent Decor. And does anyone know what this is? It's cactus that has lost all of its flesh. And it's awesome texture. And I have a piece that's just sitting down inside the water. And then I have a piece that's just laying on the top. Okay. And we're just going to have a good time with this. I'm going to grab some of the foliages from back here. This is um, Grevillea foliage, which is quite fun. And I don't care what you say, sometimes bigger is better. Larger scale sometimes is just the way you have to go. Okay, so by the time I'm finished here, you won't even see me. And some, for some of you, you'll like that, and for some of you, hopefully not. Okay. All right. There's some of the Grevillea foliage. And then we have some of this 
Stuartiana, the beautiful autumn foliage of eucalyptus. I love how graceful it is. It just has this beautiful movement. And you see that I'm going all the way around the centerpiece and leaving this area in the center pretty much open because I don't want to hide all of that texture of those beautiful pieces of cacti. This is Pennycress. Okay, see that beautiful limey green. David, I'm Too loving bad. all these textures. It's fantastic. I can imagine Absolutely. that in a in a florist window and people just kind of being amazed as they walk by. Absolutely. Absolutely. Texture is so amazing. And if it's not used properly, it's just okay. But by using many different textures together, so incredible. So making a nice large grouping of the penny crust. And I'm going to take a couple of pieces of pittosporum. And I want you to see what I'm doing here, okay? For those of you that don't know that pittosporum has so many levels, okay? I'm going to cut this one center piece out, and I'm going to cut that side shoot off, and then I have this piece here. So I end up with three pieces from one, okay? So to me, again, that retail side of me is saying, okay, that's my moneymaker. Let's not waste those pieces. When you're doing bouquets and you're using um, pittosporum to surround your, the collar your vase or collar your bouquet with, pittosporum will be fine out of water for 36 to 48 hours if you've processed it properly. So you don't have to have all those pieces and then strip the foliage off because you want clean stems. You can use these little small pieces in the side of the bouquet when, and when you're wrapping it, they'll stay in, okay? So like I say, that's, that's the retail side of me saying, I need to make sure that I have enough money to go on my vacation next year. Maybe give my employees a raise because they listen to me once in a while. David, um, the cactus, we're getting a couple of questions about where, you, yes. where do you get that fantastic cactus snake-like creature from? I have <laughs> tons and I ship all over the US. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, it, you should be able to get this from your local wholesaler. Um, they, they're able to get them. Um, if you want actual resources, I can get them for you. I would prefer that you either contact me or contact Lottie and through the two of us, I'll get you that information. Um, but local wholesalers should be able to get them for you, okay? And if not, if you're interested, truly interested, and you want me to take care of you, I will certainly do that as well. Thank you. So I love feathers this time of year. And these are, these are a type of pheasant feather, the zebra pheasant, okay? And I have a little piece of um, one of the skewers because I don't like them just straight. So I'm gonna use a little piece of skewer and I'm gonna gently run that along and I've given a nice little curve, see that? So instead of being straight up, I've given it that great little graceful curve. So I'm gonna do a couple of pieces. With that great little curve. A little more there. Just a little longer. Okay. Okay. And Our extra little florets, rose florets. We're going to cut those down. Okay. 
and make a great little cluster of that tedious hard work that took seconds to do, but we don't tell anyone else. Okay, so there we have our texture inside to give you that great little look down inside there. Okay. That's all right, David. Thank you. That's so I had a great time. Can I keep going? <laughs> yeah, I'm, we have a couple more minutes if you have. Fun sure, sure. Absolutely. I'm ready for some questions or I can do another piece or whatever you'd like. Well, um, David, I know, I know you're all about working smarter, not harder. And so uh -huh. um, maybe if you could give us some kind of a, your top tips would be amazing. Because I know, um, I, you know, even with just the, the um, Pittosporum, I noticed that you use you used every little inch of it and I, Absolutely. I love that about you. <laughs> Absolutely. I, there, there cannot be any waste. Um, waste means that I'm not going to make any money. Um, so even, I will even just say this, even the little pieces from the Lotus pods, this is just the wire that was on the Lotus pods and you can't really see it. Let me see if I can, there we go. See that? I just made little curly cues from that wire. And that again could add another little accent to this design. So um, buying smart, and I'm not telling you to, to give yourself restrictions, and I'm not telling you that you have to um, have recipes every week, but in our climate right now, this would be my biggest tip for you. Take advantage of social media take advantage of what is in season and to and know what's available in one week and two weeks and three weeks out okay so right now we know that all of the seasonal flowers um, are 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 going to be finished soon so why not take advantage of them um, buy bunches of flowers make prototypes of something put it on your social media and use the terminology that limited supply available. Limited means I have to buy it now, okay? So limited supply available. We have um, mixed local bouquets at $39.95 in a beautiful keepsake container, okay? Not, not telling you that that has to be your price, but as a general rule, have fix your pricing so that you totally will make money. Say we must have your order by the end of this week and we will deliver the following week or in two weeks we will have a rose special. We can sell you 24 beautiful long stem roses. Long stem can be 40 centimeter, can be 50 centimeter. Depends upon your market and what you've already taught them about a long stem, okay? 24 long stem roses. You can buy a bunch of roses for, let's say you can buy them for 59 cents a stem or 49 cents a stem, and you can sell them for 35 or $40 for a dozen roses or for two dozen roses. Little changes like that, little impulse buys like that makes the customer happy, makes you happy because you can pre-order, makes the wholesaler even more happy because he knows how many to buy for you and you can buy them by the box and get better pricing. Um, so that would be my biggest tip, making sure that you are using your social media to your advantage and selling your product in advance to your customers so that you can buy smarter, your wholesaler can give you better pricing so that you can buy smarter and then pass on those savings to your clients. Um, also, my last tip for you is this. If you're not having a good time doing this, don't do it anymore. Make yourself happy because life is too short. And through all of this pandemic, I have learned that I can't do anything else. I love flowers and I love designing and I love selling flowers and I love seeing people smile. So I couldn't do anything else. So I wanna thank Teleflora. I wanna thank Potomac Floral Wholesale. They've donated all the product for me to use today. Accent Decor, Syndicate Sales, Smithers Oasis, um, Fitz Design, Design Master, 
all of these wonderful people, we would not be able to do this and continue with Telcor's great um, respect for our education um, without all of them as well. So Lottie and Arlene and Leanna and everyone watching, thank you so, so much. And I'm here for you. Just contact me. I'll try and answer other questions for you throughout the next couple of weeks if you have. Yeah, it's um, it's very exciting, you know, kind of coming into this holiday season and just seeing, um, you know, people's sales and, and the specials that they're going to be offering. And, you know, we're kind of in a new world and a new reality for everybody. So um, I'm excited because I know you're always so great about kind of updating us. So I'm excited to hear from you about um, the latest and greatest uh, sales and and you know your top sellers because that that's always awesome to hear from you Absolutely. Um, any Anytime. predictions from you I, I won't hold you to them but do you have any predictions um, for best sellers for the the holiday season <laughs> as far as flowers <laughs> yeah flowers and greens or you know um, you know the holidays are basically traditional and um, if any of you have any red pickup trucks, boy, don't sell them cheap because they are going for a hot price. <laughs> the real thing I, or the vase? The vase, okay. <laughs> the red pickup truck. My gosh, that thing is, uh, I see them all over the place in DC and everybody has them. So they're gonna be a huge item this year, I think. Um, but I think that your standard traditional flowers are gonna be best. Um, I don't think that there's going to be any one item that's going to stand out, but I think that you as a florist, as a, as a designer should maybe look ahead yourself and say, okay, I'm going to set myself apart and I'm going to order one particular flower that's going to set me apart. Maybe that might be, um, you know, you will probably be able to have red charm peonies at Christmas this year. And you should be able to have cymbidium orchids this year. And you should be able to have white nerine lilies or amaryllis. Find a particular flower that's going to set you apart and push that flower on your social media. This is going to be our, our exclusive floral of December or for the holiday season. And it can be in different colors. But that particular flower would be something that you would really specialize. And I think that would be, I think that would be awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. Um, Candy Crandall is asking, is Potomac open for walking customers right now? She wants to come by yes. soon because she misses walking in the coolers. We are, we are. And you know, it was kind of tough. It was hurting us for a while, um, but we are actually able to have, um, because the um, ergonomics people kind of come in, we can have eight people in our warehouse at a time, customers, um, and we're open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturday we're open from 8 a.m. to noon, um, and that's when customers can come in to our warehouse to actually physically shop. Awesome. We'd love to have you, anybody. Thank you. Okay, one last question for you, yes. David. Um, uh, Betty Ann is asking, how far ahead um, do you need for the amaryllis to bloom? How far ahead do you need to get it? Um, okay, so can I give the whole trick on that? <laughs> yes, we want to know tricks. Amaryllis, amaryllis are absolutely beautiful. And if you want them to be open for a weekend, order them and have them in your warehouse, in your shop on Monday. Um, this is my recommendation. I've tested many different things, but this is what I found to be best. Um, I take the amaryllis as soon as I get them out of the box. Before I do anything with them, I take, um, a, I take green Davy tape and I tape around the bottom of the flowers because I don't want it to split. You know how it likes to curl? Okay. Well, and after I tape that, I don't even cut my flower. I put it directly into water. Okay. And just into regular water, I use a, um, the floral bulb solution tea bags. Um, but I don't cut them, okay? And it sounds crazy, but I don't even cut any of my bulb flowers. I don't cut freesias, iris, tulips, I, because they've traveled generally, they'll come from Holland, unless it's in season locally, um, they will come already processed and in buckets for us. But coming from Holland, they've had two or three days that they actually create a scab. Do you remember the scab that I showed you on the on the um, echeveria, okay? 
that little brown scab, it's kind of like when we cut ourselves. <laughs> All of those cells from our blood go to that area to heal over and scab to make us heal and, and have beautiful skin again. So that flower, when it's cut, it does the same things. Those cells go to that area where it's bleeding and it seals. So when you take that bulb flower and just put it in water with the tea bag solution, um, the bulb tea bag solution, it actually loosens the, the scab as if you were in the tub and it would loosen your scab, it would get real soggy. And that's what it does to that. And then the flower thinks that it's on the bulb and it drinks water slower. I have had freesia last four weeks and every flower opened. Yes, I would have to take off the, the first blooms that came out, but every flower on that freesia opened. So by not cutting them, um, just in room temperature water, get them to the point where you like them and then put them in your cooler. You can cut them after that and put them in your design work, but getting them to open slower and not cutting that bulb flower has worked out really, really tremendously well for me. Thank you, David. I feel like we could have a whole other program just about care and handling. Uh, really? Absolutely. <laughs> and I, do, I teach that class twice a month. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Liana um, had uh, something to say. Yes, David, thank you so much. I'm excited to get into work tomorrow and take this huge basket of pods I've had sitting forever and skewer them all. <laughs> and have a great time i can't wait absolutely thank, thank you. you my thank pleasure you everybody um uh, david liana arlene you guys have worked so hard we really really appreciate you thank you to um everybody attending today this will be available on our youtube channel channel uh, teleflora design education and we will see you on the next program thank you so much everybody have a great rest of your evening bye